Thanks. Nice. Um, it brings up a couple of different uh, subjects. Um, the first of which is how, exactly how together uh, should it be between the harpsichord part and the violin part, um, it, how much it should, should be get a, together in verticality. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it has to be that together vertically. Um, because for me, togetherness is actually not vertical, it's actually horizontal. That's another uh, uh, debate. Um, because music is actually written in a horizontal fashion. It proceeds from, one, from point A to point B, and none of them go from up to down. They all go from, from left to right, at least in our <laughs> occidental way. Um, that's one thing. And the other thing that I liked about it a lot is that you, uh, you succeeded in making the distinction between uh, something which is public and something which is private. Because I think that in general, musicians uh, at the moment, or even maybe, I, th I think that people are sometimes too demonstrative. They, they want to, they, they're into projection. Uh, they're into uh, the, the idea of making something heard in the last row, making sure that everything is very, very secure, etc. There's this whole idea of pleasing the public, but a public with 2,000 seats, which is not what the piece is written for. All of this chamber music was written to be heard in small rooms. It was never, ever meant to be recorded. <laughs> it was never meant to be filmed. It was, that's not to say that it was, it was only played by amateurs. It was played by very serious professionals as well. But this distinction between the, the private and the public, I think, makes a sensational difference because we're always talking about tempo and dynamics and decrescendos and crescendos. And for me, it's not the first thing that you have to look for. You have to look for whether the piece is actually public or private in conception. I learned it from Horowitz because Horowitz can play the wildest Skriabin or the wildest Rachmaninoff for the back of Carnegie Hall. But when he plays the Schumann Tramorai, it's private. And this is just something that a great, great musician has to be able to do. I heard Jesse Norman once warming up in the Salle Pleiel. She had four last Strauss songs in Paris. And she was humming the, the beginning and the end of the Debussy prelude about the girl with the, the golden hair. And it was private. And it's one of the most beautiful things that I ever heard because she was warming up. It was behind a closed door. I just so happened to be passing. And she was humming. And with the portamento she was putting in it, it made it sound like a spiritual. <laughs> it doesn't sound like that when it's played on the piano. And she wasn't even vocalizing. She was just humming it. it was, and that's what this should sound like. It should sound like somebody, try it again just the very beginning. Because if you get the beginning, you've got the whole thing, more or less. <laughs> try it. And don't try to be together on the first note. Just play together. But you faked it a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's nice to have a note, well, if you do a messa di voce, the, the, the thing is, is do you wanna hear, do you wanna hear Wood, d d do you want the audience to hear wood or hair? Yeah. That's always, uh, for stringed instruments, it's, because sometimes the audience only hears rosin. <laughs> but they don't know the difference between hair and rosin. But if I stand here, I hear rosin in the first note instead of hair or wood. So it can only be so intimate. It can, it can, it can be well controlled, but still private. Yep, but you missed the note. That's a long melodic note. Don't throw it away.
how, how exactly do you want to play that has to be a very, very delicate down, uh, up, down. Okay. Very, very well controlled because after the final note, you should actually stop. It's your last note for a while. Just a few bars before. Okay, once again, because of time, would you, would you mind continuing? Oh, sure. Thank okay. You. Well, there you have the you have the public, right? <laughs> which is which is which is a nice thing. What interests me the most is the, is the very beginning and then the middle section where the, where the um, where you actually do accompany mm -hmm. the harpsody. Because it's very difficult to know exactly what part of the bow to use ex ex exactly, and it doesn't have to be systematically the one that feels the best. Um, can you do just the beginning? And as as we said before, don't um, the, the third note. He can attack the third note, but you shouldn't. The C sharp. But you're um, you jump on him. He he jumps something. He makes a very loud arpeggio, which goes whoom like this, and you have to wait. You really have to just you have to let the harpsichord resonate. And then, then you play, and it will be perfectly together. Don't, don't, don't feel that if it's not together from the very start, that it won't be together. But you really, you really have to. You, have to, you just have to be ready for, for her. I mean, I'm just, I'm just torturing you. No, 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 no. Try again. Okay. 
the little, the li da da dum bum 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 bum. For me, the, 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 you throw away the low note a little bit too much. They're viola notes. Well, what I call viola notes. They're violin notes. But, but it's, another, it's another string. It's another string. I mean, I'm a big fan, fan of, 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 of figua. And, 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 and hearing, the, I don't mind hearing the string crossing and the time that it, that it takes to get there. But of course, you have to finesse it with exactly where you are, where you are in the bow. Try it. Okay, okay. And now the part where, now the, the part, yum, bum, 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 which is further, where you have the trills. The question, the question, the question, do you group them in six or in three? It, it depends upon which, what, what you want to be heard and what you're actually thinking of, because the way you use the bow yeah. really depends upon whether you're thinking of them in, in six or three, regardless of what's written on the page or eventual slurs or things like that. Can you play it just once alone? If you, if you think of doing it very egal, if you think of just taking all the chic out of it, dum bum bum bim bum 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 bim bum 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 What's important, sometimes you, sometimes you eat up the fifth note, the, the, the note just before the end has to have enough, enough it has to sound as a, as a melodic note. But, but then, so you need time on the fifth note going to the sixth, but after the sixth note, you also need time going back down. And, and he is just going rattle, 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 rattle. So you basically make, it, it, musically, I mean, on the page, it looks like he's making a special effect with all this rattle. But you're the one that really is making the special effect. Try it. But you, you, you play, but you should do the sixth and then phrase it. Yum, bum, 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 bum. If you don't phrase after each sixth note, you rush. Okay. That's the problem. Sure. And then he can't really play because he has to rush. He can play, but he can't play well because he has to rush with you. You can't do all that and, not, and then not stop. Okay. That's a perfect example of a place where you just have to stop. It just sounds like a big, huge cantata sinfonia that's about to blow up. Mm -hmm. I mean, when Bach does that, it's the most amazing thing. He does that with a violin and a harpsichord. It's, it's sensational. I mean, he usually needs trumpets, drums, three oboes, two bassoons, and everything to make, to make that effect. OK, so we have to go on. Uh, would you rather play the third or the fourth? No, the third. We, we, we can stop from the third if you want to just talk. OK. As, as, as you wish. Oh, also, one, one other thing, not, not to take up time or to increase torture, um, about tuning, about tuning in, in general for everyone that plays. There's a, there are all sorts of different ways of, of tuning. 
Um, and what's become fashionable and international by 2019 is all of these huge chords from the harpsichord, all this trying out, doing unmeasured preludes and all this kind of stuff, and I am completely and totally against it. What I really like, is, is especially for gambas, is this. When you see them change, when you see their hand move, you give the next note. And I like to do the same thing with, with violins. And if the violinists don't like it, I tend to force them. Because it's something, even the public has become used to this, to this whole idea of the harpsichordists and the lute players. And I think it's, I, 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 I don't like it. I, I think that it's, 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 it's a pity. It, because it's like a mini concert. And then, of course, no one stops and allows silence before they stop. They, play, they, they finish playing, they finish tuning their last note, and they automatically dive into the piece that they were tuning for. And I think that that's a real, I think it's a real pity for everyone, actually. J just sort of blanket uh, statement. Okay. And then you have to decide if you, if, if you don't want the harpsichordist to give you an E, because you don't know if you're in C major or A ma C major or A major, then you have to tell the harpsichordist not to give you the E. Okay. Um, because if you don't want the E, you really don't want it, and the harpsichordist has to know that you actually don't want to hear the E on the harpsichord. That's a really, ex that's, I also feel strongly about that. <laughs>
um, in, on the first note, uh, the low F sharp has to be a little bit longer because of the, of, the, of the registration. If you play it on the bus stop, you just have to, it has to stretch a bit more so that it doesn't uh, spit. You don't have to wait for him because yeah. he has several notes to, to, to play. Uh, what's interesting is that as you played it, for, in the beginning of the piece, I felt that your up bows were systematically more beautiful than your down bows, which is a strange thing to say, but well, okay. <laughs> this is the source of strange things to say. Um, but I, but the, more, the, more, the, the, the more you played, the more you got comfortable. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason, it's, it's, the, it's, it's, the, it's the preparation between, uh, for the down bow. Okay. It has to be something that, that's very, very fluid. But you got it as the piece went on which was, well, that, that was a good thing. Can you play just the beginning again? I think it's just a question of, 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 rela of relaxation and, and just not being nervous and, yeah. <laughs> Or maybe it's because I, I still hear it a little bit in the beginning. Okay. It's just it's just it's just the turnaround that you have to that you have to finesse a bit better. It's just a detail, but I think it's important. Also, you have to every time you have a repeated note like you have to make sure that you hear the second note. Okay. There's something that I refer to constantly as the repeated note problem, <laughs> because sometimes you don't hear the second note on the harpsichord, the violin, the recorder, the flute. There's all, whenever you have a, a single pitch, a, a pitch which is actually repeated, you have to you really have to decide exactly how you want to play those two notes, especially if it involves a bow change. Can you go just one measure before? But how do you play the trill? But the challenge is that it doesn't have a termination. He writes He could have written But he didn't. He wrote the simple version. So you have to be able to deal with the simple version in the bow because you have less to hide behind. <laughs> Nice. What's your articulation between If you want to stop the sound, do you want the bow off the string or on it when you stop the sound? I don't think it kind of went all the way in. Try again. Fine. Repeated note. Also nice. Can you can you can you can you hit that one earlier? The earlier it is, the more expressive it is, the longer it lasts. Just move it to the left. You also have to be careful of the repeated note. In, instead of something which is sloppy, okay? Nice. Nice. I, I would. I, I think it's diam diam okay. instead of diam 
bottom. I think that to trail with only two notes after the articulation, I think it's too much of a subphrase. Yeah. I like to hear the three notes at the end. Repeated note again. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we have to stop <laughs> because of time. Um, sorry, we can't go on, but thanks. Thank you. <laughs>